What we're talking about is this point of attraction that life has caused you to gather up. And so we just want to put this into this conversation lightly here. When you were little and your parents were alcoholics and all they did was fight with each other, you put marbles in your bag. And some of those marbles are still there and still active, not because they need to be, but because you kept repeating them. So you keep them active. Or when you were a little kid and you went to school, you didn't know it, but your teacher had just entered menopause and she was so grouchy and she hated everyone, mostly children. <laughs> and it was your first encounter with someone outside your family who was shining a spotlight on you and you put marbles in your bag. And so the atmosphere that you grew up in caused you to put different marbles in your bag than the atmospheres of the kids today. Everybody has their reasons for the way they feel the way they do. And what complicates it is trying to sort it out with each other. You're not even just trying to sort it out with the generations that currently exist. You're trying to sort it out with the generation from which you came a little bit too. We're just going to lay this one sentence platform here. When you reach the place where the sorting out that you're doing is between your bag of marbles and your inner beings bag of marbles, now clarity starts coming to you. And so does empowerment and so does positive influence. So a lot to think about there. Esther said to someone the other day, you know, when you're in pain, whether it's physical pain or emotional pain, when something's really happening in your life, that's not the time to really try to fix your bag of marbles because the law of attraction is responding so powerfully to your point of attraction that there's a headwind coming at you that you can't see past, but it will lift off of you because you don't maintain that specific focus all the time. And when it does lift up off of you, then all the wonderful things that you ask for while you were in pain that you put into your vortex, that your inner being is now focused upon when it lifts up off of you because of distraction or whatever, you'll be gathered as a cooperative component into this broader understanding. And oh, that feels so good. And that really is what this gathering is all about. Everybody gets to have their perspective and everybody gets to play out what the law of attraction brings to that perspective. But also everybody gets to play out what makes sense and what doesn't, what feels good and what doesn't, what brings clarity and what doesn't, what brings pain and what brings joy. Your guidance system has always been there. We're going to take it to yet another step back level just for a moment and not to try to complicate all of this, but to simplify it as you hear us out here, because as humans are sifting and sorting through life and debating and disagreeing and agreeing with each other about a lot of things, there's a overall human consensus that is born within almost everybody that goes something like all this figuring it out has brought me to this conclusion. And now I would like to teach my conclusion to everyone else. And the thing about that is that your diversity is here for a reason. Now stay with us because that's just the basis of this sentence, which is really what we're going for. And this will make sense to you. When you decide that you're going to explain how you feel, that you're going to talk about your feelings, you could be on the upper half of the emotional scale, or you could be on the lower half of the emotional scale. And if you're on the upper half of the emotional scale, while well, you put more attention on that, then talking about your feelings really benefits you. But if you are feeling like a victim or disadvantaged or taken advantage of or less than, then you're talking about something that your inner being will not go there with you. And so what you're actually doing is learning to calibrate to other people who will calibrate with you because misery does love company. So does joy love company. In other words, the law of attraction brings that company together, but it doesn't matter who it is that you're sympathizing with or empathizing with when you do it, the law of attraction brings you evidence of that, which makes you even more and more and more a stronger believer of that. And it isn't until you show yourself how to break free of your own self imposed bondage 
that you're even willing to be out in a world with a whole lot of people with a whole lot of different opinions and friends that's who you were and how you felt when you decided to come into this body to begin with not one of you said oh it's a mixed bag down there and I don't know clean it up before I get there because if I get there and they're all in an uproar about something I don't want to deal with that so get them all in agreement on sex marriage money politics religion just get those things all in alignment and then I'll come and as a people who are identical in nature we will all live happily ever after and we say no you wouldn't you would be bored and you would come to an inevitable end because there would not be any contrast for you to make new decisions about the universe would cease to be and of course that cannot be because it's not set up that way and so what it comes down to you're gonna reach this place where you understand that you get to only choose what's in your bag of attraction and when you choose in keeping with what you've already vetted through life experiences you come to understand that like Esther with her teenage grandson she can get from him what she expects in any moment in time we're not saying that he might not be in a mood resistant to Esther's happiness and we're not saying that he might not be happy in a mood when Esther is not but what we are saying is that if you will more and more deliberately align with who you really are when someone decides when your mother or anybody tells you it's good to have empathy it's good to have sympathy it's good to have understanding of where someone is this is when we want to say with the most clarity that we can muster when you've decided that you want to focus on what is we want to say which is is it that you're focusing upon are you focusing upon the seed in the ground that you can't see anything yet are you focused upon the vortex version with a full expansion of it in other words it's a good thing to be sensitive we're not trying to teach you to be insensitive to how people feel we want you to be considerate we want you to be considerate but we don't want you to be so considerate that you calibrate to all the scramble that's going on and forfeit the clarity that you were born to live in the process until you come to the place where you acknowledge I'm more than this me there's another me who adores me and when I focus with who I really am I just see love where I look I see beauty where I look I experience deliciousness where I am and when I focus upon the problems and the troubles even though they are real we're not asking you to deny reality we're asking you which reality that you want to focus upon which reality do you want to move toward the new the improved the expanded or the old considered vetted pushed against who are you who are you are you a creator or a regurgitator are you for something or against something you have to decide because your inner being is always what you are for and what you're for is clarity and abundance and well-being and love and upliftment and stability so this is where what we're talking about look for the easy existing matches existing matches to what existing matches to what my inner being knows the easy ones not the ones that I struggle with to find that'll just make you pull against your inner being and push against to justify it what are the easy existing matches that you have in other words there are so many easy existing matches that you can join your inner being completely without having to sort out the pros and the cons that's about calibrating to your inner being that's what we really want you to hear if you could hear that your work is calibrating to who you really are not trying to figure out everything that you ever lived people spend lifetimes trying to sort that stuff out and never get it sorted out because in every moment the path of least resistance or the past of most allowance opens a new door for you in other words that truck wasn't there when you knew it was right to stop at that light that was the right thing to do until a new piece of information came to you and then the path of least resistance changed the path of least resistance is always changing and you know why <laughs> because your inner being knows where you are in every moment in time in relationship to everything you want and it's always calling you in the direction of everything that you want 
You're born with emotions. If you don't pay attention to the way you feel, then you are setting aside the most important part of who you are, which is the relationship between you and you. When you come up to an opinionated person who is very sure they're right, and you say, well, I'm not going to just get rolled over. I'm not just going to be a doormat, which means I should push against their opinion. We say that's still calibrating to them. In other words, what you want to do is to calibrate to something else. Join your inner being in looking for their existing matches. This is a passionate person. This person cares a lot. This person is asking in a strong way. This person's inner being is calling them to strong understanding. But maybe I would be inspired to say something that would be helpful, maybe not. But when it becomes an argument about whose opinion is right, rather than whose vibrational alignment is strongest, you always lose. And that's what's going on in humanity all the time, isn't it? Not everybody's disconnected all the time and not everybody's in alignment all the time. But in other words, unless you are caring about closing that gap, finding that harmony, then it's sort of like a court bobbing on the ocean. Not much control is happening. And what we're saying to you in ridiculously simplistic terms, we get that is that you just can't get to where you want to be that way. You're just not going to sort it out. And so rather than try to find the rightness and the wrongness, how are you going to get to the bottom of who put the first marble in their bag and how many marbles got put in their bag? And you're making yourself nuts by trying to sort out why things are happening the way they're happening when not one of you said, I'm going to have to clean up what I don't agree with in order to create what I do agree with. Not one of you said that. When you say that in your human form, you cause a tug of war because your inner being's not ever going to say that. Your inner being is going to appreciate every intention that every human holds. Your inner being is going to appreciate every belief that every human holds. Your inner being is going to appreciate the magnificence of the law of attraction and the magnificence of free will and the magnificence of this universe that is expanding constantly and that needs all of this variety and diversity and contrast in order to expand. Your inner being is not ever going to cry in protest at those who haven't quite figured out how to let in what they're asking for. Your inner being is just going to revel in the fact that they are asking and that the cooperative components are being gathered. You just got to give up your battles with each other. And most of the battle with yourself will go away when you give up your battles with each other. And you can tell when you've got a battle with yourself going on because you don't feel good. It either feels like despair or it feels like irritation. It's an argument with yourself that you're wanting to get over and an agreement with yourself that you're reaching for. And the beautiful thing about this understanding is that all these people that you've met up with, maybe it's somebody you just met on the airplane or maybe someone that has been your child since their birth. Everything about your life with them has caused you to put so many marbles in your vortex bag. I want them to have a good life. I want them to know who they are. I want them to feel the fullness of who they are. I want them to discover their empowerment. I want them to calibrate to source energy. I want them to fulfill their reason for being. I want them to have fun along the way. I want them to come up with their own ideas about what they want. I want them to be the creator of their own experience. And this knowing what you do want, it's a stick with two ends on it. It's logical that on the other end of it, you're at the time you're saying all of those things you're saying I don't want them to be disempowered I want them to be empowered I don't want them to be confused I want them to have clarity I don't want them to have a hard time I want them to follow the path of least resistance I want them to feel their empowerment once you get the hang of this and you start deliberately joining your bags of marbles together you're gonna to notice that your point of attraction gives you evidence of the influence maybe one who's connected up like that is a million times more powerful than one who's out here on the raw and ragged edge.